This is your lecture for chapter nine, which covers the respiratory system. And we will start with some quick anatomy of the respiratory system, starting with the upper respiratory tract. You have first the nasal cavity, which is shown here. It's a chamber that's lined with a mucous membrane and cilia, which are tiny hairs. And separating the nasal cavity is the nasal septum, which is cartilage that internally divides the nasal cavity into two halves. And within the cavity, there are olfactory neurons, which are receptors for smell. Um, and these are found in the tissue lining of the nasal cavity. So the, the entire pharynx is the upper throat. It serves as a passageway for food and for air. Um, and also for liquids, basically anything that you swallow. Um, and it's divided into three sections. The upper section is the nasopharynx, located behind the nasal cavity. Um, and then below that is the oropharynx, located behind the mouth, behind the oral cavity. And then the laryngopharynx is the most inferior section. Um, and that's located right above the larynx, which is down here. That's known as the voice box. Um, so now the, the larynx is the voice box. It contains the vocal cords, which are responsible for speech production, and also a really important structure called the epiglottis. It's shown right here. Um, this is a flexible piece of cartilage that acts as a lid to close off the airways during swallowing. Then below the larynx is the trachea, also known as the windpipe, and this is a passageway for air only. Then um, down a little bit lower in the lower respiratory tract, there are bronchi, which are all of the branches that the trachea divides into. And these bronchi carry air into the lungs. Um, they ultimately lead to alveoli, which are microscopic air sacs. They're found at the ends of the bronchioles, which are the smallest of the bronchi and um, the, the entire lungs themselves. These are the major organs of the respiratory system. Um, there are two organs that contain the bronchi and the alveoli. The right lung is slightly larger than the left lung. So it's divided into three lobes. The left lung is only divided into two lobes. The lungs are covered by the pleural membrane which is a double-layered double membrane. The visceral layer, visceral pleura, directly covers the lungs. Then there's a space called the pleural cavity. And then there's the parietal pleura, which lines the thoracic cavity. Underneath the lungs is the diaphragm. This is a muscle that is located at the bottom of the thoracic cavity. And when it contracts and relaxes, it causes inhalation and exhalation. So some terminology here. Pulmonary ventilation is simply breathing. So it involves inhalation followed by exhalation. External respiration is the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the air within the alveoli and the blood that's flowing through the pulmonary capillaries. These are the small blood vessels in your lungs. Um, we also have gas transport. This is when the, the blood transports carbon dioxide to the lungs and oxygen away from the lungs and into all of your body cells. And lastly, internal respiration is the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the blood in the systemic capillaries in your body cells. The systemic capillaries are all of the small blood vessels that are um, in close proximity to all of your body's cells and tissues. Um, so next section here is just um, some of the, the word roots and actually includes the combining vowel. So these are combining forms related to the respiratory system. Also, some of the commonly used prefixes and suffixes related to the respiratory system. Um, so now quickly, I'll get into some of the pathology related to respiratory system. COPD, you've probably heard of this. It's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. 
And this is really a like a wide variety of diseases and disorders that um, for whatever reason ca cause a chronic um, obstruction in the airways. So included in this large category of disorders is first of all asthma, uh, which involves bronchospasms and they occur due to an allergen or some type of stressor. Bronchitis is also within, um, falls under the umbrella of COPD. Uh, when anything with an itis ending means inflammation. So this is inflammation of the bronchi, usually caused by smoking or air pollution. And then emphysema, this is decreased elasticity of the alveoli, and that's almost always caused by smoking. One of the main characteristics of emphysema is a barrel, having a barrel chest, a really broad chest, because air becomes trapped in the alveoli. Okay, um, next is influenza, also known as the flu. This is an acute infectious respiratory disease caused by the influenza virus. It typically has a really rapid onset and symptoms include fever, chills, headache, and myalgia, so that's muscle pain. Tuberculosis is an infectious disease that affects the lungs. It's caused by a bacterium rather than a virus, and it's spread by droplet transmission, so um, droplets of respiratory secretions as they kind of um, fly through the air. Symptoms include weakness, chills, fever, coughing, and sometimes bloody sputum. Pneumonia is an inflammatory disease of the lungs, and this is caused by a variety of things. It could be bacterial, caused by a virus, a fungus, or chemicals. Symptoms include coughing, chest pain, and often bloody sputum. And cystic fibrosis, this is a genetic disorder, and it causes the body to secrete an abnormal thick mucus. This mucus affects multiple body systems, including the digestive tract. It clogs digestive ducts, which leads to malnutrition. It also clogs the airways, which leads to difficulty breathing. And this is a fatal disease with a life expectancy of about 30 to 35 years. Cancer related to um, the respiratory system is the only one I'll mention is lung cancer, bronchogenic carcinoma. This occurs within the lining of the bronchi. It typically metastasizes quickly. Remember that means that it'll spread to other tissues and other areas of the body. And it generally has a poor prognosis. Um, all right, next section is uh, other diseases and conditions. Acidosis is excessive acidity of body fluids. Anosmia is a lack of sense of smell. Apnea is, means without breathing or a temporary lack of breathing. Asphyxia is a condition caused by insufficient oxygen. Atelectasis means a collapsed lung. Hypoxemia is oxygen deficiency in the, in the blood. Hypoxia is oxygen deficiency in the tissues. So the suffix there indicates the difference. Emia is a blood condition, and ia is simply a condition. So that's the difference between those two terms there. Pleuritis, also known as pleurisy, is inflammation of the pleural membrane. Remember that surrounds the lungs. Pulmonary edema is fluid accumulation in the pleural cavity. A pulmonary embolism is a blockage in an artery supplying the lungs. And a few abnormal breath sounds. Crackles are an abnormal sound often caused by exudates. That means when you have some sort of fluid in the lungs, so it causes like a crackling sound when you breathe. Strider is an abnormally high-pitched breath sound. It's usually caused by an obstruction in the upper airway or from swelling. And a wheeze is an abnormal whistling breath sound, usually caused by narrowing of an airway. Um, and then some procedures. Oximetry is a measure of oxygen content in hemoglobin. 
Spirometry is a test that measures the breathing capacity of the lungs. A bronchoscopy is visual examination of the bronchi using an endoscope. Arterial blood gas measures dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide in arterial blood. A tracheostomy is a surgical procedure where an opening is created um, into the neck. Um, it goes directly into the trachea, creating an airway. Endotracheal intubation. When someone's intubated, it's the insertion of a plastic tube into the trachea to help maintain the airway. Um, so maintaining air flow into the airways. And aerosol therapy is a lung treatment that delivers medication in mist form to the lungs or to the airways. So an example would be if someone takes an, uses an inhaler to treat asthma. Um, and then the last thing I will go over is, oops, is just some other pictures related to those um, procedures. And last thing is some pharmacology related to uh, the respiratory diseases. So these could help treat some of these. Antibiotics destroy or inhibit the growth of bacteria. Bronchodilators, these relax the muscles in the bronchi. Um, so when they relax, it opens up the airways, so there's more room for air to move through. Decongestants constrict blood vessels in the nasal passages, which limits blood flow. Um, and by doing that, it reduces inflammation. And expectorants, these liquefy respiratory secretions so they can be easily dislodged during coughing.